I am your host, Fred Nettles, and this is The Same. Hello, Kayla. Uh, thank you for joining the segment on today. Um, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Er, you know, everything's going well. I'm really excited that you know you decided to to come into town and to to sit down with me today. Yeah, I'm glad you had me. We're gonna get into some good conversations. Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Old. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get right into it. Uh, you're from. You're a native of, of course, Brandon, Mississippi. Yes. Is that right? Brandon, Brandon Mississippi. Um, you're currently at W at WTVA as a news reporter. Yes. And that's located where? In Tupelo, Mississippi. Okay. In Tupelo, Mississippi. Yes. All right. Um, let's 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 start from the beginning, though. We're gonna take it, you know, take it back to take it back to your childhood. All right, Kayla. Uh, tell us a little bit about life growing up in Brandon, Mississippi. Well, let's just start with where is Brandon on the map? Because okay. people are usually like, what does that mean? So we have to say Jackson okay. so that people understand. You know, you're from Carthage. Oh yeah, but definitely. But the yeah. other folks, where is Brandon? It's Brandon Flowood together in Jackson, everything's like one big part. So uh, life in Brandon was really nice. My parents uh, raised me pretty well, I have to say. You know, I had to brag on them a little bit because even though I grew up as an only child, they made sure that they were kind of like my siblings in a sense. Like we were the three musketeers. So I always had someone to teach me, to play with me, and to discipline me all at one time. No matter what was going on, my parents were always at my games. My dad was in the background with me playing soccer, mm. and my mom was making sure that I knew how to be a lady, how would you know come out of myself and not be so nervous most of the times. And so they ended up, you know, really just putting all those things together and made it a nice little package that you see right here. Oh yeah. Me. Um, transitioning from that to um, did you play the sports in high school? Like what? Like what was your what was your athletic and academic career like? Okay, academically, we'll start there. Okay. I was um, an A and B student. I really didn't do much, you know, with reading at the time. Especially when I was in school, I was like, "Why do I have to read? <laughs> read? What do you mean?" So <laughs> that was always me. Um, but then I ended up enjoying different things, and that's kind of where I found out in high school that I liked being the spotlight or an entertainer, and that's what I wanted to do. And so we had a show back in the day called The Paul. And it's a sketch show made of like all these different, <laughs> these different things. We did so much foolishness, to be completely honest. It was foolishness. But at the essence of it, it was truly the basis for what we do now. And a lot of us are still in journalism or are still in some type of entertainment or media field from that. So that was my little roots there. Hmm. And athletically, I was a soccer player and a track person. Cause you know, you kind of get mixed up in what you're trying to oh, say, like yeah. track person. I was really a sprinter. So ah. everyone thinks that I have distance because I played soccer, but that's not the case at all. I can burn you well, in you a good 200. Oh, so you're fast, huh? Yeah. Oh, you, once, think, you think you're fast? You? No, I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I, uh, I could burn you back in the day for a good little <laughs> distance. But if we run in miles, that's not, yeah, yeah, I'm losing. <laughs> I guarantee you, I'm going to lose. But uh, yeah, so playing soccer and running track back in the day. That was my little, you know, athletic career. And I played soccer, I think, from the age I was three. Wow. And then I had to convince my parents to let me run track in the seventh grade because I told them, like, just let me try, just let me try. They were so against it because they thought I was going to lose my first race. Wait, I why? Winning. Because, I mean, I was soccer fast. I had always been soccer fast. Yeah. We never knew that I was actually fast until I got on the track. Mm -hmm. And there it was. And that was the end of it. I ran all my way into college and played soccer in the college. So did you always want to work in news media or when, once you got to Jacksonville State, did, did, did you strictly want it to be sports related? Um, okay, so I knew <laughs> that I always wanted to be an entertainer. I knew that I always wanted to be on TV, but when I first went to Jacksonville State, I thought that I wanted to be in sports medicine. Mm. And then I saw one nasty injury <laughs> and that was enough of the sports medicine yeah. for me. So I said, no, I think the best thing for me to do is to talk for the rest of my life because that's what I do and that's what I do well and meet people and greet people. So news ended up being the best option for that. Now did I always know that I wanted to be a news reporter? Not necessarily, mm -hmm. I just thought it was super cool, but until I actually realized that it was attainable, I was like, okay. It's hard, but let's do it. Let's just see how it goes. So that's kind of where that news part came in to play. So what is your, you're currently a news reporter for WTVA. Yes. Uh, 
So what, what is like, what, in, in your mind, what is your next step? Because I, I know you, probably, you may not want to be in just a news reporter for, for your entire career. Yeah, I mean, I think that being a news correspondent will be really cool, and I'm going to tell you why. Mm-hmm. is because there was a certain story that I had. So it was the Columbus tornado that happened in February of this mm-hmm. year. And I was out there with my little camera. I'm an MMJ, which means a multimedia journalist, which also means you do it all by yourself. So you carry the camera, you set your stuff up. They, ne- yeah. they never tell you that. No, I, I mean, they tell you, but they don't tell you. Yeah. So I'm out here, you know, with my little camera light, one little light. Y'all have a bigger setup than I have. And I have my TVU pack. Everything's going good, right? And I'm just here. I'm confident. I'm telling my story. And then I look over to my right, and I see Good Morning America. Five cam set up, three lights, three people standing around giving cues. And I'm like, wait a minute, I want some of that action. Yeah. So I felt like watching that and I got to see it for two days straight really put like a fire inside of me to be like, this is cool. That's that's what I want to do. I want to tell stories to the masses like that. But then I also want to host my own talk show or mm. TV show one day. Just so you can see more of my personality and it's not going to always be so uh serious because we have to be serious a lot of course i know you have other hobbies outside of of course news reporting um just talk talk a bit more about that well now my hobbies are books i'm kind of getting old (laughs) so my hobbies are books i'm a book collector doesn't mean that i read them all i have about eight books i'm trying to read at one time which we all know that's not possible but i like to read i love going just different adventures and Especially living in Tupelo now, this is a place I never thought I would be. So just trying to understand what is Tupelo? What does Tupelo have to offer? I love to eat. So I'm always eating. <laughs> like, oh, maybe you can start a food segment. You know, I have. Yeah. So I have something called Good Grub Alert. And okay. it's for all my little hidden treasures. It's not your, you know, your mom and pop joints is really what it is. It's not your Applebee's and stuff like that. Not putting, you know, Applebee's <laughs> down. But your chain food restaurants, that ain't making mm. Good Grub Alert. Good yeah. Grub Alert are your local heroes mm. that really serve you Good Grub for cheap. And we got a couple of good ones. So, I mean, I'm always doing something. Always. And then especially being a news reporter, and we're always telling the people in the community stories, I feel like you have to be a part of the community. So I go to exactly. different events and make myself, you know, viewable. So you can actually see me and know that, hey, I'm not just telling you stories and then that's it. Speaking of, um, of course, making yourself available to the public, um, you, were, you were most recently at Alcorn State University. And you were speaking to college students there. Just talk a bit, talk a bit more about that. Yeah, so that was actually something really strange because I got the email asking that I would show up. Mm-hmm. And I was like, is this spam? You know, <laughs> what? what is this? How do you know about me? Because it was still it will, kind it of friendly. Yeah. yeah, and it ended up being a really nice opportunity to speak to students who were like me a year ago and didn't know how you were going to get into the news field. But then when I sat and I really spoke to everyone, I started to notice that we all say we want to do something, but we aren't doing the groundwork necessarily mm-hmm. to get there. And part of the reason is because we don't know how. So that was my, you know, my thing. I came up in my nice little purple suit and I told them, you know, this is something that's attainable. This is how you have to go about it. If you say you want to be on the radio, wear your radio samples. If you say you want to do TV or you want to be in movies, you want to write something, build something, do something. So I think they really grasped an idea of what you have to do to get to this point because I didn't know and I was just trying I would come out of soccer practice and head straight to a radio station mm-hmm. free work okay it's a lot of free work you have to do before you get to that point and so I think they now understand and some of them have even reached out to me again and said hey thank you for your tips now I have a job or now I have an internship because now I know what to do exactly so and so in, in my opinion that's 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 a huge that's a huge reason I believe that we need mentors more mentors for the youth coming up because because like because like you say they don't know what they don't know right. they don't know what they don't know so i mean just having people in in, in their perspective feel that they that they want to be like they, the things that they want to do is great is great to have um great to have mentors in those areas i will say this about mentors i have one in particular that i have to give some credit to well two one is a man named Rob J. He's from oh, yeah. the Jackson area. Jackson. First of all, he took me under his wing and really taught me the game and how to 
tell a story and use your personality, mm-hmm. like use your gift. If you are able to speak to people and connect with people, that's what they want to see. They don't want this anymore. I'm telling you a story and I'm bringing it to you live. And this is where my location, <laughs> we don't want to see that exactly, anymore. You exactly. know what I mean? The people who stay are the people who people love. And it's not about making people love you. If you're just doing what God told you to do, just being genuine. How, you know what I'm saying? And how he gives it to you then they will love you. But he is one person that I definitely have to give a lot of credit to. And then my other one is Brittany McGraw. And I went to this uh, short course at mm-hmm. North Carolina A&T right before my graduation day. And I met this woman, her name is Brittany McGraw. She gave me so many tips as to the things that I didn't know. What and did she do? She's a news anchor. Okay. And so she just gave me a lot of different tips and put things into perspective for me and told me, hey, yeah, you can do this. Cause I was like, okay, I'm two months out and I don't have a job yet, <laughs> like, what's going on? And so what I mean by mentors and people who really like will build into you, she had already told me like, first of all, you are a two sport athlete, you don't have time, yet you're out here creating movies, you're doing news packages, mm-hmm. you're, you know, you're building whatever you have to do to create an avenue for yourself to get a job. And then from there, she was like, you already have the basis. Let's just heighten it up. Let's edit some other, other things and let's really put you in the game. Mm-hmm. And so she was super vital to me getting this job at WTBA as well as Rob. I had to give him some love. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, Kayla, at 22 years old, you were already like way ahead of the curve. You're you're a news reporter for WTBA and you like and you're all you also have other hobbies going on, whether it's speaking engagements, impacting y- younger lives. I'm saying younger, but but you're only 22. So, uh, so let's talk 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 more to, talk more to me about your ability to remain focused on on your goals and everything that everything that you want to accomplish for the future. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> my ability to remain focused, mm-hmm. uh, more so my parents' ability to keep me okay. focused <laughs> because. Honestly, there's some days that I will call my mom and be like, I want to quit. And she instantly says, okay, get off the phone because this is what we're not going to do. You're not going to tell me you want to quit. And that's the thing. I think my parents have always made sure that if you say you're going to do it, stick to your word. And if you believe that something can happen, then by all means, chase after it with everything you have. And so in some instances, a lot of the time, me remaining focused has a lot to do with parents that bible some joel osteen because it's it's tough and especially in this field because there's so much that you have to deal with on a daily basis you know people say oh news is depressing but you don't think about the fact that we have to internalize sometimes what we're telling you like there could be a story that's really really awful and you think we you know we tell you go home i got my check and that's not really how it is a lot of times we tell that story and that story sticks with you and i want to you know give credit to my dad who when my first story really got tough to me like that he spoke to me and he said you know your job is to tell the story yes you should be connected because that's where it really is truly you are being impacted by the stories in your community however if you're going to be able to stick around you have to be able to take it with you, relax, and then get ready for the next day. You know, you say your prayers and you move on because you can't keep it in your head all day long. And that's the thing about news. News can be tough. Like, it just really tell you. you. Yes, it will affect you. And I go home every day and I used to sit and watch our news and like watch myself and constantly look at game film because as an athlete, that's what we used to do. Mm-hmm. You watch game film and you keep it rolling. Well, I would watch game film and game film, <laughs> and game film, and oh my God, I said this word, and why do I sound like this? And why did I do it like this? And that's not my news voice, and this it's just, it's too much. Yeah. So I go home now, I watch Three's Company, I watch Living Single, I love old TV shows, I listen to some music, dance around my apartment, and you relax, relate, and release until the next day. So I think staying focused, that's part of it, but then also looking ahead, mm-hmm. and I'm also kind of, Fighting that too, because you can't look too far ahead and forget where you are in the now. And we always want to be, especially at 22, like you just said, you put it into perspective for me that, hey, you're 22 and Mm -hmm. you have a job and you're doing what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, I'm 22. Okay, there's people out here who are on network. There's people who are already doing this and that and the third and they're out and they're doing more speaking engagements than me. And they're going to conventions and that. And you can't, your journey is your journey. 
you know and if you believe something's gonna happen in your life and god gave you that gift to believe and to be able to make it all happen and put it in a package then it's gonna happen it's just not gonna happen tomorrow maybe not even next week maybe not even the next year and that's so tough for us especially as millennials technically we're not millennials though because we had yeah we grew up right (laughs) but but, you know technically we are so into the okay new now next right now right now right now it's got to be tomorrow Mm -hmm. like oh my god if i'm not making five hundred thousand dollars by tomorrow okay i just made ten dollars how am i gonna make five hundred thousand tomorrow and that's what we are and especially in social media age too that that veil of well such and such guys say they got it and i don't have it yet well such and such is doing a whole lot of different things oh, yeah. and they really don't have it like they say they do definitely you know people are taking pictures and claiming they're at cancun and they're really in their backyard so that's kind of how Mm-hmm. life is now you have to make sure that you remain focused on what your goal is and not what pookie and ray ray's goals are because it's not yours it's not your, they're my favorites to use but it's not yours so i think all of that in one little package is how i remain focused you know your family understanding that what's yours is yours and making sure that your timeline doesn't coincide with god's timeline because it will and he will humble you oh yeah <laughs> quickly yes quickly. And to, to bring everything full circle, uh, we talked about, of course, you, you, you're you being as successful as you are at such a young age. Do, do you have any, of course, I guess, words of inspiration for the next Kayla Thompson? Well, I would say don't be the next Kayla Thompson. Be greater than me. <laughs> That's what my parents always say is don't be me. Be better than me. And I think if you have so much to give and you, first of all, know what it is that you have to give the world, then it's your job to make sure that you give it to them. And, and don't hold back on that just because you feel like people aren't giving you the love or people aren't really paying attention to what you're doing, because they are. Mm-hmm. People are watching you. They always. don't want to always give you your credit, but for the next Kayla Thompson, because that's what I dealt with, I thought, you know, I, I'm writing things, I'm doing different things and no one's really paying attention. I'm going to stop. Why? Why would I, you know what I mean? Why would I stop? Because you are visibly showing me that you're paying attention. I know you're looking. So, so like I said, don't be me. Don't be the next Kayla Thompson. Because whatever that person has is something that they need to give the world. I'm giving the world, I think, energy and entertainment and laughs, hopefully. And, you know, and some information Mm -hmm. Monday through Friday. But I really feel like. If it's yours, then whatever it is that you have to do, just chase after it and don't let go because you think that it's not going to work out or too many people are telling you it can't. That's whack. It really is. Yeah, definitely. Well, Kayla, those were truly great words of inspiration. And I really want to thank you for joining me on this segment on today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> one time for the underdog. Yeah, underdog. We the one that got the power when it's time to make a change. One time for the underdog. underdog. Yeah. One time for the underdog. Yeah. One time for the underdog. Yeah. One time for the. One time for the underdog.